Hi, welcome to another video by Fortune Buchholz of NotFortuneSchool.com. And if you've been following me along uh, the past week, you've noticed that I have uh, picked up the Chiro Marchetti Fantasiacal Kipper deck again, and I have fulfilled the reader requests to go through all 39 cards in the deck one by one and give a brief description and discussion of their use. So you can look back in my playlist if you haven't seen the other two videos, if you've kind of come in just now, you know, into the playlist, you can uh, go back and see the first one which does cards 1 through 13. And then the second one does of course cards 14 through 26. So here I'm going to pick up and I'm going to go from card 27 on to the end which is card 39, because Chiro's deck does have three extra cards that are not in the quote-unquote traditional kipper. And if you're interested in the history and background of those extra cards, go ahead again back in my playlist and look at my extra card video so you can see my discussion of the history of those cards, where they come from, why it's wonderful that there are extra cards, and um, you know, then you can join back here and you'll you know, have the whole lowdown. All right, so that said, let's just go ahead and get started. We're going to start, as I said, with card 27, Unexpected Income. Right, this is the same uh, translation from the German. This is the same in English and in German, and Chiro has translated this one as um, unexpected, uh, unexpected income, unexpected money. Um, I also sometimes call it loose change, uh, just to make the distinction between this card and the winning lots of money card <laughs> more clear, right? Since sometimes people are confused by the, the two cards, you know. Chiro illustrates them, I think, very nicely, perhaps uh, more legibly than the traditional Kipper deck by having a slot machine on one card with a 777 and having this one be just, you know, a small amount of money, one coin in the hand. The traditional uh, Kipper deck has uh, a man standing in front of a desk with some papers, bills, and invoices, and holding a, like a check or an invoice. So um, that's a kind of difference. But in the traditional illustration between what Chiro is doing here, but of course the problem is, is that in today's world where we don't really use checks as much as we used to, and most bills are now paid online, it, it can be a little confusing, you know, what is he staring at, right? What, what's with the open drawer and all of this? So um, let's just, you know, go ahead and, and say that this is a great improvement. I think Chiro's um, drawing is really much more legible. Some people have criticized it because they think that it looks too much like a tarot card. Um, I, I don't find that connection myself, uh, but if you do, it doesn't have the same meaning as the tarot card, so don't uh, draw that uh, connection in your mind, but instead think purely in Kipper terms because we are here in Kipper land, right? So uh, what, what do we see here? We see the significator uh, giving uh, the needy some money in front of the house. And by the house, I mean card Kipper 20. It doesn't seem like a lot to the giver, but it is still needful to the recipient, right? And this is why this imagery reminds some people of a certain tarot card. But this is not, again, as I said, how we read it necessarily in um, the Kipper deck. So in the Kipper deck, we understand it as a small sum of money from an unexpected source. So you can understand it as the loose change you find behind the couch, uh, you put on your winter coat, and voila, there's a $10 bill you forgot about, it's a surprise work bonus, it's a small billing error that you fix, uh, it's a reduction to your gas bill, it's bonus cell phone minutes, right? These. Uh, these kinds of small amounts of household uh, money, right? So this is definitely not, as I said, anywhere near as large as Kipper 11, the card that I often call jackpot to help make this the distinction between these two cards clear. Uh, the unexpectedness of this money leads to a notion of suddenly, swiftly, and surprisingly. Right, so when we're looking at this card as a descriptor of another card, uh, again, in, according to the context of the question, think of that suddenly, swiftly, and surprisingly, um, you know, meaning. And it, in this case, it, it may remind some people of the Lenormand Scythe 
card 10, Lenormand 10, right, which also can have the connotation of swift. Uh, but the source of this money is an everyday kind of source, right? Uh, so we also, from the traditional uh, illustration, which you don't see here, that I previously described, the guy with papers on a table, uh, we have the concept of small bonds, notes, payments, households, accounts, offers, purchases, invoices, and checks, right? Uh, so then from this concept of the check, right, we move to something that has to be signed. So if you're talking, if you're asking about a paper, right, or you're asking about some kind of document and you get, say, the pleasant message card here in Kipper, Kipper 7, and this card is next to it, it may suggest that it's a document you have to sign for. Likewise, if you see card 17, a gift, and you're expecting a literal package, then expect that you have to sign for that FedEx package. Do you see how those two are going to combine together to create that meaning? Um, and then from the uh, sense of checks, again, which take 10 to 14 days to clear in the old-fashioned, non-electronic, non-Apple Pay world, right, we have, a, we have a hint of timing of 10 to 14 days or, you know, around two weeks. So you can also, um, you know, think about it in, in that regard. Okay, let's go ahead to one of my uh, favorite cards, and I'll tell you why it's my favorite in a moment. This card is waiting or expectation, and there's a traditional sense to it of it being three months, three, a three-month wait, a three-month expectation. Um, the, this card here is illustrated very similarly to the traditional card. You see uh, a lovely young lady looking out her window over an orchard. Uh, the, this card image actually is derived from a very famous sentimental painting that uh, was popular in Germany for uh, decades uh, by a, an Austrian painter who settled in Bavaria. His name is Moritz von Schwant. And um, it, this used to be, I guess, like the equivalent of dogs playing poker. Uh, on Black Velvet, it was a painting that was everywhere in all kinds of reproductions, both nice reproductions and super cheap ones. It was a very, very popular painting at one time in German history, and everyone would have, you know, recognized the illusion contained in uh, the Kipper card. So uh, here Chiro has uh, illustrated her as a resigned and slightly somber lady in a day room in a morning dress. Uh, as she gazes out the wide windows over a misty orchard. The church bells, as you can see, toll in the background, and there's a locket dangling from her lace choker. So that holds a picture of her special friend, the one for whom she is waiting. She's waiting with clasped hands. Um, you know, so this gives a sense of importance. You know, there's an emotional charge here that isn't just like in a simple act of meditation or simply passing the time. It's really expectation more than just waiting. Do you, do, if you understand what I mean by the difference, right? There's, as I said, there's, there's some valence there, right? Um, so literally we understand this is a pause, a waiting period, and no forward motion, right? Um, for, and we associate this with a time period of about three months. And this is something that differentiates it from the next card, card 29, prison, which has no time associated with it. In the prison, you're stuck, dude, right? But here we, we do have a boundary on the sense of waiting. Um, so it, it's like a time for observation, reflection, contemplation, thinking things through, patience, non-action. Right, just letting events unfold as they must until you, you know, until your intuition tells you the time to act. But this is not a time to like leap in, right? Events should ripen of their own accord. Okay, so that's, that's kind of what I, I want to say there. Now, let's go on to 29, prison, or as a Chiro has it, imprisonment, because he has, I think, again, use, usefully and, and wisely, um, emphasize the psychological component to this card, right? That you feel imprisoned, right? It's not like the traditional card, which shows the old Munich uh, military prison by uh, one of the old gates of Munich. And it just looks like a plain yellow building that almost no one outside of, you know, Munich or, you know, who looks at antique pictures of Bavaria would ever recognize you. Like, what is that plain yellow building? Why does it mean a prison, right? Well. Um, again, that refers to the old military prison of the 
uh, king of Bavaria when Bavaria was still an independent kingdom. Right, remember this is uh, this is from the late 19th century and it's looking back nostalgically towards the Biedermeyer period. So that, you know, that gives it kind of this like double remove from most contemporary readers. And um, that double remove is hard to get over. You have to do a lot of study and, and you have to, you know, kind of become sort of a little Germanist and uh, go study, you know, German history of, you know, both the classical Weimar period, the Romantic period, and then into the Biedermeyer period, so that you can kind of understand sort of the relation between when the Kipper is made and what it's looking back to and what really happened during the Biedermeyer period. And that can be a lot to wrap your head around. So I think, you know, Chiro was very, very wise. Just, you know, push it up to a time that we, we're all much more familiar with. Thank you, BBC. Uh, so here we see uh, a prison, and it actually is much more visibly a prison or a sense of imprisonment uh, to most contemporary people than just a plain building. Um, this, of course, is a challenging card, right? You see the battered hands clutching at the harsh prison window. Uh, you know, the iron bars look rusty and dirty, or maybe those are specks of blood. I'm not sure. It's, it's not pleasant. There's no doubt about it. You see that the tattered sleeves suggest that perhaps this is a debtor's prison. It looks like our friend, the gentleman, has fallen into bad straits. His wrists are bony. He's hungry. And that rat, you know, I don't know if that rat is here to be his friend or to wait for him to fall asleep and gnaw his finger off. It's a, it's a grim situation all around, right? So, um, you know, the fearsome aspect is something that is hard to convey because again during the Biedermeyer time to which the original deck looks back you know this military prison uh, erected by Ludwig van held many political prisoners and so when you were uh, sent to the military prison by Sendlinger Tor in Munich, you normally didn't come out alive, right? So it's really, it was really a bad scene. And I think that, um, you know, Chiro has very wonderfully uh, shown that, uh, the, the, you know, the difficulty, the suffering, the intensity is all, I think, very nicely in, in this card. So this card is a prison, a jail, an asylum, a rehab center, a, a military barracks, uh, because it was a military prison. Uh, because it was a large public building, some people also uh, have used this for large public buildings and uh, also large corporations, you know, banks, corporations, you know, big multinational firms, things that reside in fancy office buildings and skyscrapers. Um, and you can um, layer uh, this in, you know, if you want as a meaning, although it's not obvious that you could find that meaning in this card just from looking at this picture, but that is a traditional association that um, you can use, and, and I do, do use it if it's appropriate in the context of the question. Uh, so in an abstract manner, it stands for any locked, off-limits, sec secured place or state. So in this sense, it, it could even be um, a hospital, right? Because that's locked and secured, right? Um, so from this sense of locked in and secured me, we get this sense of confinement, imprisonment, isolation, a desperate sort of motionlessness, right? Um, and, and there's no time limit to it, as I said, in contrast with Kipper 28, which has this sense of, you know, a three-month time limit. This card does not. You're stuck or blocked for an unknown and seemingly bleak time, right? Unless, of course, you take some action. Right, which is the whole goal of our style of card reading, is to you know identify where people are and then help them use the cards as a mirror to communicate with themselves to find ways out of the places they feel stuck, isolated, and blocked. Right. Um, so that's uh, that's what kind of what I want to say about that. Let's go ahead then to card thirty. The court's person in the original German. Um, I like to call it magistrate because that is the closest um, English approximation to the function of the court's person uh, in the original German card. Um, Chiro calls it judication. Again, this is uh, taking a person card and making it into a psychological state. I know some people who are new to the Kipper 
are overwhelmed by the number of people cards and they're like, oh my God, how can I identify all of these people in my life or in the life of the sitter? So perhaps um, Chiro has, you know, uh, foreseen that and also offered everybody a benefit by changing some of these people cards into mind states or psychological states. So here, this would be adjudication decision making. Right. Uh, this is a neutral to a somewhat challenging card, right? You see a magistrate here on his bench, and there's an anxious couple before him awaiting their decision. You can see they're anxious kind of by their, their body language, by their posture. So when you get this card, you know, this is a guy who's going to make a decision on your matter, right? It could be for you or it could be against you, but you're going to get a decision. You're going to get an answer. Right? He's not, however, unlike some of the other people cards in the deck, interested in you or your friend or on your side. Right? He's neutral and objective. Right? And because you're just a case number to him, that can be stressful. Right? And that can, um, of course, you know, come out as a challenging aspect of the card, as some kind of stressful matter, a stressful lawsuit, a stressful decision. Right? Um, so this card, of course, stands literally for, you know, uh, judges, right, uh, administrators who make a decision, uh, minor government officials, bureaucrats, clerks, school boards, zoning boards, other kinds of decision-making boards, uh, professional advisory boards, right? So his decision can result in a fine, a fee, a permit issue, a permit denied, the need to file, to serve someone or to be served serving documents, right, particularly if this is with, say, uh, the message of concern, I would understand it as a document that's to be served, right? Um, it could also be the, the finalizing of a small family matter. This could, you could also understand this as like family court, right? Um, so this is the kind of guy who's going to explain a process or the process to you. And so then we get this sense of a process server, a therapist, an arbitrator, a negotiator, uh, since he's explaining stuff for you, some people also use him for teachers, uh, professors, uh, tax preparers, you know, people whose job is to explain rules and facts to other people uh, is could very nicely be represented by this card. And so from that, uh, also sometimes lessons, right? The lessons that are being conveyed to you and the lessons that you need to learn according to the context of the question. So... Uh, this very interesting card, very layered. All right, let's go ahead to card 31. Traditionally in German, this card is called a short illness, and it depicts depicts a fainting spell, <laughs> right? That so you see a lady oh, on her fainting couch, and the doctors they are holding her wrist with a with a little bottle of smelling salts in the other hand, right? So that's really cute. I, but, you know, most people have no idea what that's about, right? If you see, you know, a lady on a weird-looking couch and this guy's holding her hand, you're like, what's up with that, right? But um, that was the original uh, depiction, so it was just a feigning spell, a short illness, right? A minor setback. Here, Chiro has gone uh, for something that's more legible to modern people. Again, we see um, a nurse right, in a hospital with a patient. So this patient is in a bare bones public ward on a hard iron bed with a thin blanket and the nurse is just checking off, you know, his chart, right? So literally we understand this as, you know, a minor setback, poor health, a cold, a minor illness, a sprain, maybe, yeah, a headache, right? Um, so with Kipper 36, uh, Distant Horizons, which uh, is, you know, sometimes known as uh, Big Hope, Big Water, um, it could be more serious. So definitely look for that um, combination. Uh, and then you would definitely need a, a checkup, right? Um, so this card is something uh, without modification, something that you'd take yourself to bed for, like, as I said, a migraine, like a sprain. You'd go lay down and you'd put uh, your foot up. So from this sense, it means rests, breaks, naps. Right. Uh, so again, I've already talked about my feeling on on the ethics of reading health issues. I don't do it. Uh, if you know you get this card, definitely have the sitter or querent sort of talk to you about what this card uh, could mean for them. And again, if they have concerns, if they have you know a negative intuition, then just recommend that they you know go get that checked out and. 
that's more this is more of a listening opportunity for you right since so many times sitters particularly women have their um, concerns their health concerns ignored or overlooked and people don't take them seriously so even though this card indicates a minor problem you know we will hope that we we do listen and we offer compassion and support for our sitters at all time right because unconditional positive regard is a is a key aspect here of helping people in a contemporary card frame. So um, some people, however, who don't have the same qualms about this that I do may go a little farther, sort of tiptoeing into the health area, right? And they will look to the cards around one, two, three, these cards to see what the nature of the problem could be. So. Um, if you're going to do this, the card right above would be what's going on with the upper body um, and, you know, what's going on on the, the various sides of the body, left and right. And then you could look at the card below and see what is going on with the lower part of the body. Or likewise, you could say what is being repressed, what illness is being denied, what illness is hidden. And you would have to do that by really talking to the querent and you know, really sort of probing into the context of their concerns. So if you'd like to go there, you can go there. I personally don't. But, you know, that's, of course, for you to, you know, work out for yourself. Um, now, then let's go ahead and talk about a further meaning of the traditional card. Um, because the traditional card did show a man and a woman sitting on a a, a a fainting couch or maybe in some decks it looks kind of like a day bed you whenever you have a man and a woman in a bed you know people immediately go there so um some people do you know equ equate this card if the context is appropriate you know to mean hanky panky um if especially if false person keeper eight is nearby then you definitely think that you know um there is uh, something going on um, and you could kind of investigate that. Um, I mean, let's just say overall that this is not a card that indicates things are going the way that you want, but as I said, overall, it's a minor setback. So let's go ahead and move on here to another psychological moment in the Kipper. Grief and despair. This is grief and anguish in the original German, and uh, Kipper has translated this as, I'm mean, sorry, Anchiro has translated this in his Kipper as despair. So I like to call it grief and despair. This is, of course, a challenging card, right? You see a man in shabby clothes. He's a member of the working poor. He's distraught, having just lost his job, and he is reduced, really, to just, you know, <clears throat> crying in the street. So we understand this literally as grieving, weeping, or getting grief, right? It can also be really severe stress leading to freakouts, emotional exhaustion, serious concussions, serious fevers, not just a, a little headache or a light migraine, but a really serious, you know, the kind of migraine you have to go to the emergency room for and get medicine that lasts for a week, you know, really a really serious um, problem, right? Uh, this card is also sometimes used for jealousy. So, you know, that comes from the getting grief or giving grief or, you know, anxiety kind of feeling of that comes from this card. Um, but hopefully, right, there'll be one of the more positive cards like gift or, or great fortune, which will offer balance and hope that it'll all work out somehow, right? And that will change this card into more of a minor setback or a temporary stumbling block or a case of, you know, when, uh, when the door closes, a window opens, you know, so uh, also look for that combination, right? Uh, let's go ahead to uh, the other card, Concern. This is a, another challenging card, right? So here we meet an older man in a side room. You can see he's, uh, his body language, expression, and gesture uh, suggest anxiety and rumination. Right, so this is definitely the catastrophic thinking here. Um, he closes his eyes and he doesn't see the beautiful warm light that's streaming through the arts and crafts stained glass window behind him. Uh, so we understand this as, you know, literally concern, worry, angst, confusion, inability to focus, a depressed mental state, right? 
um, it's unclear what to do at this moment. So there is this negative tendency to be uh, deeply pessimistic, as I said, to uh, catastrophize, um, you know, and hopefully that this will be surrounded with uh, uh, better cards, enabling cards, so that this will be a short-lived state or that the client can work work their way out of it. So, you know, we want to we want to hope for that, right? Now let's go ahead and talk about this card, Occupation. All right, so as we've seen, we've talked about the different kinds, or we will soon be talking about the different car kinds of work that are shown, um, you know, in the Kipper. You can see we've seen people who don't work, the aristocracy and the haute bourgeoisie, right? We've seen people who are financial advisors, who are capitalists, who are money men, who work on Wall Street. Um, you know, we have also seen uh, here uh, people who, you know, work for a living, right? Who have an occupation. Now, um, Chiro has kind of given this a sort of a dual sense, as you can see from the way that he has illustrated this. He's, again, this is not the traditional um, illustration, uh, which is kind of like a guided ho. But um, we meet a seamstress here in her workroom stitching fabric on an old-fashioned treadle sewing machine, right? She appears to be deeply absorbed in her work and working late into the evening. So we can look at this kind of two ways, right? If, we, if the question is literally about an occupation, that is your job, right? We can see she's doing skilled handwork as a trade. But it's hard and it's not so well paid. So for example, if people ask you, you know, should I take job A or job B and you get this card, one of the options is going to be, you know, a skilled job, but it's going to be hard work and the money may not be as much as you expect. So they may have to negotiate for that, right? She, let's just say she doesn't have, you know, uh, card 13, Kipper 13's situation, right, where he has a, cush, a cushy desk job in a beautiful office, you know, with his bright career and he's going off you know, to play cards with lots of money, right? Uh, it can also, of course, literally be sewing or mending. This may also give it a sense of a hobby, right? Because people literally sew and mend both as a job, but some people enjoy sewing, right, as a hobby. So from the sense of sewing, we also get a sense of self-employment, freelancing, the gig economy, you're going to go drive for Uber, right? Uh, do it yourself, piecework, or even what you put and cobble together. Right. So if we're talking abstractly about ideas or concepts or, you know, something you can do, it can be literally something that you have to piece together. Like, you know, if someone is talking to me about writing, I would say, well, you need to, you know, go consult several sources and put those together. Right. Did you understand that? Uh, so since we also have this sense of hobby, there's a sense of sport or avocation that you devote a lot of effort to, even though it doesn't pay. Right. I mean, that could be a good thing, right? A lot of people, you know, like to go play soccer or they like to go play squash or they like to go running or they like to do yoga and they're not, you know, ever paid for it, right? It's just a hobby, just something they love to do, but something to which they devote a lot of effort and they're really invested in. I like to associate this card with autumn, um, you know, or mabam. So just as is a time situation there. Okay, let's talk then about this card, Pathway. This traditionally means a very long way, is what it's called in German, or a long path, right? So you can say here, here you as the significator, you arrive at this long, rocky, uphill forest path, right? It winds uphill. It's going to be not an easy path to walk, but the trees do seem cool and inviting on one side. On the other side, without the side, without the light rays, it seems a little hairy, right? Maybe a little dark and creepy. Um, so, but you know, all of our circumstances depend on the attitude we take to them and how we want to approach our challenges. And I think this is what Chiro is attempting to um, illustrate here in this card with, you know, the beam of light coming from one direction, right? So the same road can be uh, a challenging and uh, opportunity that you want to tackle and go forward with, you know, if you have a positive attitude or, you know, if you have this sort of negative aspect to it, it, it can be something that you're a little bit afraid of, something you're worried about being able to accomplish, something that seems daunting. So uh, that's, a, I think, an interesting uh, sense of perspective that he's inserted into the card that's not really in the traditional card. And I, again, I find it very beneficial. Um, 
so you can't really see where you're going, but it looks better, <laughs> right? It looks bright, it looks like someplace worth going, and it looks intriguing. It looks like a pleasant patch of sun after this long climb. So literally, in the Lenormand, it's all paths, roads, walkways, tracks, trails. Um, from this, there's also a sense of long races, like marathons or triathlons. It's a long road, so it represents distance, right? When is something gonna happen? A long way away more than one year, maybe even two years, right? Um, and so this card traditionally has an association with two years patience, right? So this is a long time, a long journey, far away, great distance, all of the ideas of distance uh, that you would want to, you know, use metaphorically and both literally uh, in a reading. Okay, let's talk about card 36. This is normally called uh, Big Hope, Big Water, Great Hope, Great Water. This is a very interesting card, very unique to the Kipper. Um, uh, so uh, Chiro has kind of uh, given this uh, his, you know, sort of steampunk discussion, and I think it's um, really nice. Um, it, you know, it, this is a very positive and uh, uh, enabling card. It's it's an unusually positive card, in fact, very very enabling. So you you see your beautiful dreamlike gossamer uh, steampunk rainbow ship, and it's it's lifting its uh, anchor to fly you to the wide shores of your best hopes. Right. So this card is all of your yearnings, your dreams, your hopes, your wishes. Right. Um. The significator is sailing to a new shore. Right? So also some people sometimes are reminded of a certain tarot card, the Six of Swords, which is also the journey to another shore. Uh, so literally this card is also the sea, lakes, large bodies of water, continents, longer distances than the long path, foreign places, foreign people, uh, a sense of foreign contact. Right? So from this it also suggests opening your mind, developing new views, becoming more spiritual, becoming philosophical. Uh, traditionally, its position is important, right? If next to a positive or, hope, or hopeful card, right? If we're looking at the, the positive or hopeful card, you know, on the right, and this card is on the left, right? Um, this means that it's just a dream or just a vision or maybe even a fantasy, something that you know, isn't real and isn't going to happen or that you have to, you know, manifest that you yourself have to take steps to have to have happen. But if it's the other way, right, if it's on the right and the other card is on the left, then it means it's you're definitely it's it's on the horizon. You can get there. You know, you can make that happen for you on your current path. You know, keep going. Don't give up. Charge forward. Go, go, go. OK. Um. You know, uh, with challenging cards, however, it acquires um, a more illusory meaning, maybe more like the Tarot Moon card uh, for those people who read the Tarot Moon as illusion, uh, which I don't actually, but other people do, and that's a common reading. So definitely if it's with the false person, then I would worry about hallucinations, um, totally uh, wrong ideas about reality, maybe even paranoia, right? So just, you know, kind of uh, think about that. There's also a sense of, with false person of alcoholism, alcoholism and addiction. I like to use this card for day as a time card. Okay, so here we are. We're going on now into the extra three cards, Chiro's extra cards. Uh, they're very useful cards. I like them a lot. Uh, they do, as I say in my extras video, have a long uh, history in decks such as these, right? These with the German called the Varsikarten or the Soothsaying cards. So you can find a lot of other oracle decks, not all of which have survived to be in print today, but many, many beautiful decks will have versions of these three cards. And I think it's really great that Chiro included them because I think they add a lot to the Kipper system and help uh, make the system uh, more contemporary. Okay, so uh, while still reading history. So let's talk about this card. This card is poverty. Okay, so this is a challenging card, obviously. This is the card of less, <laughs> right? Of almost nothing, of, you know, plunging to zero, right? So what you see here is a boy chimney sweep in a ragged, dirty clothes on a dangerous roof 
with his mop and his broom. Now, those of us who have kind of grown up, you know, after the middle of the 20th century, the 21st century here now, uh, have seen a lot of Disney movies, and we've all seen Mary Poppins, so we have very positive feelings about chimney sweeps, right? They're happy-go-lucky guys, they're friends of Mary Poppins, you know, they whistle when they work, they sing, they, they make very nice chalk drawings, it's, it's all great, right? Very carefree. This, however, is not the reality of the 19th century, right? In Britain and Switzerland both, remember, this is a, um, a, a British update, right, to Victorian times, uh, done by Chiro, right? Uh, abandoned and orphan boys were actually purchased either as slaves or indentured servants, right, for the perilous labor of climbing up uh, these crooked chimneys that were so common in the, you know, the narrow townhouses uh, of the time. So, you know, if you burn wood in a small chimney, the suit or creosote builds up on the edges of these, you know, old brick chimneys with their nooks and crannies. And the creosote, if it's there long enough, can actually catch fire. So, you know, you can have a, a situation where, you know, you, you light your fire and your whole chimney, you know, erupts in flame because the creosote catches fire. And then what they used to have to do is they used to, quote unquote, clean the chimney. That is, they'd actually send these little boys up into the flaming chimney with a wet mop to like, you know, try to put the fire out. And it was not uncommon for them to actually tragically die of asphyxiation from the smoke. So, you know, this is, this is when you're like at rock bottom and you just have to take on the most dangerous, dirty, hardest work to try to get through the situation and keep body and soul together. This is definitely a case where you're compelled into action and you are not as free as you would like right? Um, if I mean, you compare this, say, with some of the other people cards, right? Like the life of Kipper 12, the great beauty or the rich young lady. This is not, this is far from that, right? But it's accurate again to the social hierarchy that we have in the time. And it does definitely represent a human uh, physical state as well as an emotional and a spiritual state. So definitely think about, again, this card as a psychological state. Because as I like to say, you know, the Kipper is replete in useful psychology. So we understand it then abstractly as a lack of control, a bad position, scarcity, physical, emotional, and and uh, spiritual. It's really being down on your luck in all senses of that term. Hopefully there'll be a card nearby to lighten this burden. Um, some people also have been experimenting with it as another child or person card, perhaps a friend of the child Kipper 18. Um, uh, that doesn't work so well for me, but other people have said that it sometimes works for them. So I just want to throw that in, you know, as an option for you to experiment with. Um, you know, since poverty is never having enough when it comes to a timing situation, uh, I see that this really suggests a feeling of never. Never. Unlike prison, which is we don't know indefinitely, you know, something has to change that before you get out of it, this is just like, no how, no way, dude. Pigs won't, pigs can't fly, that's what I wanna say. Okay, so let's go on here to card 38. It's a beautiful card. Of course, uh, this is Toil and Labor. Here, you know, you meet a young girl in the dreaded 19th century textile factory. Uh, so think, you know, triangle shirtwaist here. Uh, you know, tending to these dangerous and loud mechanized looms was something that children, particularly small girl children, uh, were particularly sought after to do. Again, they were often abandoned or orphaned. They were often indentured. Sometimes, um, you know, very impoverished parents would have to send their daughters into the textile mills because their very small hands could reach into these tiny spaces between the mechanical looms. And they would work between 12 and 14 hours a day you know, with no lunch breaks or anything, right? Under this harsh and feeling light with locked doors, very dangerous work, uh, very brutal work. And you could in fact, you know, lose your hand or your fingers to these mechanical pieces. Um, also, they're extremely loud. It's really, really loud. Um, and so many times people lost their hearing and became deaf. So I also like to use this card for, you know, specific danger like, you know, really physical danger, and also something that's loud, something that's deafening. Um, 
So this card is literally the low wage man manual labor, drudgery with no hope of advancement. Abstractly, we understand it as the burdensome, thankless, dangerous chore, um, useless obligations, things that you uh, say to do because you don't have, you know, that say that you'll do because you don't have good boundaries, right? Um, good intentions that are always punished, <laughs> right? Uh, hopefully this will be surrounded with more positive or enabling cards that will show you a way out or will offer suggestions towards a better future. Um, and you could again experiment with this as the compliment, since as you know, Kipper has, as I said, all these compliments, right, male and female and, and other, this compliment to poverty, Kipper 37. Okay, so you can, again, you can, you can check that out, see how that works for you, right, journal that for yourself. So then the last card here, uh, since we've gone on a little long, we're already at 40 minutes, is card 39, community. This is an enabling and positive card, right? So what do we see here? What we see here is my fair lady, right? The best part of my fair lady. Um, Pygmalion, right? The George uh, Bernard Shaw play. So this is all um, great, right? Again, for the 19th century. So we meet uh, the cheerful and stoic working class, right? Again, think my fair lady. You see the gardener. Um, the jack of all trades, the flower girl of Covent Garden, an errand boy from the local pub, the servants are out on their afternoon off for a quick drink. You know, they all come together in support in the sort of, you know, uh, local, as they call it in Britain, right? So we understand this as the friends in the community that offer support, the people who've always got your back, the people who are there for you. Um, and so abstractly, it, it just comes to mean that support, being understood, finding the place where you'll belong. So experiment also with this card as many or more in contrast to few and few less or nothing, right? As we see in other cards in, in the Kipper, such as poverty, right? Or theft. Uh, and since the community is always there for you, I'm trying out always as the timing for this card. And that's kind of working for me, you know, pretty well. So uh, that said, now I've done all the cards and I really want to thank you for your time and attention. I guess now I've made more than five hours of content uh, about Chiro's Kipper, but there seems to be a lot of interest in this deck for which I'm very grateful. It still seems to be a very popular deck. And again, I'm, I'm so happy that you find these videos uh, useful to you in understanding this deck and that so many people are enjoying the Kipper system to which I have a particular um, attachment. Uh, I really think it's beneficial and I do hope that you all enjoy your stay in Kipperland. So my next video which should probably be sometime next week and um, that will be the 16 card spread. This is a historic spread that comes from a document I found when I went to the German National Playing Card Museum in December. So um, I think you'll really enjoy that. And until then, have a great day. Uh, have fun with your cards. Be sure to practice every day with a three card drawing. See how that applies to your day. Journal that. And if you have any questions, of course, don't hesitate to contact me on social media. So thanks so much and I'll talk to you soon.